Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm continuing my research into the programmable input-output features of the RP2040. Last time, I investigated MIDI, the 1980s technology used to control electronic musical instruments. We looked at the structure of the signals and then programmed a Raspberry Pi Pico using the C, C++ SDK to send information to a Yamaha Tyros keyboard. Viewers gave me a few suggestions for MIDI projects and several viewers suggested that they would be more comfortable using MicroPython. I have a couple ideas, so why don't you join me as we try to incorporate MicroPython into a velocity sensing input. As a review, the Musical Instrument Digital Interface, or MIDI, was developed in 1982 to link keyboards, computers, synthesizers, drum machines, sequencers, and other electronic musical instruments so they could communicate with each other. Please review my previous video for more information. I'll put a link in the description below. Music is time sensitive, so too much latency in signal processing will affect the quality of the production. Therefore, I felt that using a compiled program like C, C++ would be better than a slower interpreted language like MicroPython. However, the compiling process of C, C++ is much less user friendly. If only there were a way to combine the speed of a compiled language with the user experience of an interpreted language. Enter programmable input output. PIO can perform time sensitive activities in parallel with the main cores. This lightens the load on MicroPython such that it might just be fast enough to keep up with complex musical interludes. Let's give it a try. To compare the two programs, I'll convert a few of the C, C++ demonstration programs from last time to MicroPython. I'll start simple by playing a single note repeatedly, which was demo 3 in the previous video. Let's go through the program. Unlike C, C++, any PIO program in MicroPython is included in the main program script. We'll start out by importing all the libraries we need, including PIN, the PIO routines, the timing routines, and an array routine. I could probably do it with lists and tuples, but as an old Fortran programmer, arrays are my happy place. Then we'll define the global variables, including the baud rate of 31.25 kilobaud and the output pin. Next, we'll move to the PIO program. First, we'll use the ASM PIO decorator to configure the PIO program. Here, we reserve one out pin and one side set pin and initialize them high. We also specify that we will shift data to the right out from the output shift register, which is the least significant bit first. Here we name the PIO program. As in the C, C++ version, we will wait until data is available in the OSR and then grab it. Then we will load the X register with the value seven and reset the side set pin to low, indicating the start bit. This instruction takes eight state machine clock cycles, one for the instruction plus seven added delay cycles. This is the start of the data output shift loop. Here we shift out one data bit, least significant bit first, and then use the decrement jump instruction to do the loop seven more times. This loop takes eight clock cycles, seven for the out instruction, and one for the jump instruction. Then we'll use a no-op to drive the side set pin high, signaling the stop bit. This also takes eight clock cycles, one for the no-op, six delay cycles, and then the program wraps back to the top where another cycle is expended during the pull instruction. Here we instantiate the state machine, specifying state machine one, the PIO program we just wrote, the state machine clock frequency, which is eight times the baud rate, the side set pin as GPIO zero, and the output pin also as GPIO zero. Then we'll start the state machine. That's the end of the PIO part of the MicroPython program. Now we'll turn to the main program. I'll define the function that moves the MIDI event into the transmit FIFO. Here we step through every object in the event. Like the previous video, we break out of the loop if we see the end of the MIDI event 
designated by 100 hex. Otherwise, we send the word to the transmit FIFO. Everything I've shown you above is the same for the next several demonstrations. The differences are in how we construct the MIDI event. Here, I define a 10 object long array. Then I enter an endless loop where I send the turn note on for channel zero command, specify the pitch as middle C, set the velocity to very loud, and then insert the end of the MIDI event. Then I send the MIDI event to the main output function. Wait for 200 milliseconds, change the velocity to zero in order to turn the note off, send the revised MIDI event to the main output function, wait another 200 milliseconds, and then do it all again. Let's try it out. Just like the previous video, we get a very annoying note which repeats about every half second. Now let's play two notes at the same time. The only difference is that we specify two notes in the MIDI event. Now three notes. So far, MicroPython seems to be more than fast enough. Let's do the note climb. Here I increment the value of the note from 0 to 88. No problem here at two notes per second. Let's try making it faster. How about 20 notes per second? This also seems to work fine. How about 100 notes per second? Sounds okay. Finally, at 200 notes per second, things seem to be breaking down a little. I actually think the Tyros is the limiting factor since the data is being presented at that speed. We're approaching the theoretical speed limit of 520 notes per second due to baud rate limitations. At 31.25 kilobaud, we can transmit 3,125 8-bit data words per second, including one start and one stop bit per word. We need two three-word MIDI events per note, one to turn the note on and one to turn it off, resulting in the 520 note per second limit. MicroPython, with PIO's help, appears to be fast enough for nearly all of our needs. Now I'll turn my attention to making a velocity sensor for MIDI. One viewer, Hyperzone suggested that I add a pad for velocity. I looked into using pressure sensitive touch pads, but I'd need to constantly monitor the analog output to determine the maximum pressure so I could determine the velocity. This would tie up one analog to digital converter as well as precious core processor time. However, if we make a key much like a piano, we can measure the time between the key press starting and ending. A shorter time means a harder key strike. A longer time means a more gentle one. And we can do the measurement using PIO and interrupts, using very little processor time. Let's give it a try. First, I'll build the sensor. I'll model it after a single piano key. I draw up a little sketch, nothing fancy, because a lot will be done on the fly. I start making some parts using a little pine, thin plywood, a spring, phosphor bronze for the contacts, and some fasteners. I played around with the position of the spring to get a similar pressure response as the Tyros. Here's the results. You can see that the key has a normally closed contact when the key is fully up, and a normally open contact that closes when the key is fully down. I'll connect the key up contact to GPIO2 and the key down contact to GPIO3. I'll pull both GPIO pins low. 
Then I'll connect the middle contact to plus 3.3 volts. When the key is up, GPIO2 is pulled high and GPIO3 is low. As the key is pressed, GPIO2 goes low and the velocity timer starts counting down. During the key travel, GPIO3 stays low. Finally, when the key is fully depressed, GPIO3 goes high and the velocity timer countdown stops. The slower the key pressed, the longer the velocity timer counts down and the lower the velocity value. Let's look at the program. We'll import the pin, time, and RP2 libraries. Then we'll define our PIO program as get velocity. Note that we'll preload the maximum velocity value of 127 into the Y register after we instantiate the PIO program using exec commands. Now we'll wait until the start of the key press when the key up contact transitions from high to low. After the key press starts, we'll copy the maximum velocity value of 127 from the Y register into the X register. This will be the starting value for our velocity countdown. Since the velocity counts down so quickly, I added a delay of five clock cycles to increase the velocity range of the key. I did this during tuning of the key. Now we start the countdown. First, we check if the key is fully down. I'll use the jump pin command which will jump to label key down if the key down contact goes high. If the key is still transitioning between the key up and key down positions, then I'll check if the X register has reached zero. And if not, I'll decrement the X register and jump back to check if the key is fully down yet. This goes on until either the key reaches the fully down position or the X register reaches zero. If the X register gets to zero, then the key press was too slow and no note will be started. We'll sit here and wait for the key up contact to go high and then we'll start all over again. If the key goes to the fully down position before the timer gets to zero, we'll move the value from the X register into the input shift register. Push the velocity value from the ISR into the receive FIFO and set an interrupt request to tell the main program that a key has been pressed. We'll wait until the key reaches the key up position and send a velocity value of zero to the receive FIFO. We'll also set another interrupt. The ISR was already loaded with zero since it's cleared every time the ISR contents are set to the receive FIFO. I added a time delay of four clock cycles as a debounce for the key up contact. Then we wrap back to the top and start the process all over again. Now we'll define the interrupt handler for the state machine. Here we load the variable velocity with the contents of the receive FIFO and then print the velocity value. Next we get into the main program. Here we initialize the two GPIO pins that are connected to the key up and key down contacts. We'll also define the maximum key velocity as 127 decimal. Now we instantiate the PIO. Here we assign state machine 0, use the get velocity program, set the state machine clock frequency to 4 kHz, assign the key up contact as pin 2, and the key down contact as pin 3. We also specify the interrupt handler for the state machine 0. Now we have to load the maximum velocity of 127 into the register Y. We do this because the maximum data value we can directly manipulate inside a PIO program is 31. See my videos on exec commands for more information. We start by putting 127 into the transmit FIFO. Then we use the exec command to pull the information from the transmit FIFO into the output shift register. Then we move the information from the output shift register into the Y register. Finally, we start the state machine running. OK, let's try it out. As you can see, the harder we press, the higher the velocity is. 
Now let's combine the key press program with the MIDI event program. The goal is to play notes of varying velocity with the key. First, I'll import all the libraries we need. Then, I'll assign all the variables, including an initial MIDI event. Now, we'll define the two PIO programs, one for the key velocity and one to transmit a MIDI event to the keyboard. Then, we'll define the key press interrupt request handler. In this case, we'll send the information to the MIDI event transmit function instead of printing it out like we did earlier. In the transmit function, we'll put the velocity into the MIDI event and then send the MIDI event to the PIO through the transmit FIFO. Then we'll instantiate both state machines, state machine 0 for giving the key press velocity and state machine 1 is for MIDI event transmission. Let's try it out. As you can hear, the harder I press the key, the louder the note is. I'd say that's a win. Thanks for joining me today. We demonstrated that MicroPython should work for transfer of MIDI information as long as we have PIO doing its share of the time-sensitive work. We also built and demonstrated a velocity sensor for capturing key presses using PIO. This frees up the main core for handling time-sensitive, higher-level data computations. My next step is to see if I can integrate several functions into a standalone package so I can exercise MIDI without needing a separate computer. I'm not sure exactly what it'll look like, but I have a couple ideas. If there's something you'd like to see, let me know. If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestions for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!